الحديث الثالث والثلاثون the thirty third thirty thirty third حديث أنا عايشة قالت كنت أغسل الجنابة من ثوب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيخرج إلى الصلاة وإن بقع الماء في ثوبي وفي لفظ لمسلم وفي لفظ مسلم لقد كنت أفركه من ثوب رسول الله فرقا فيصلي فيه the hadith is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and it's his wording. And Imam Muslim narrated it as well. Muslim narrated it in Kitab al-Wudu. And he also narrated it in their own. Muslim narrated it in uh, Kitab al-Wudu. Muslim narrated it in Kitab al-Tahara. The other riwayah where it says, وَفِي لَفْضِ لِمُسْلِمٍ Huh? Muslim narrated that only in Kitab al-Tahara. Bukhari didn't narrate it because the Sheikh told you, he said, well, you know, and a wording of Muslim. But he loved the Muslim. Aisha's tarjama, Aisha's biography, we took it in the third hadith. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Aisha said, Kuntu I was. Kuntu I was. Aghsilu al-janabata min thawbi rasulillah. I used to clean uh, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's clothes uh, the janaba. فَيَخْرُجُ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The messenger will leave for the prayer. What does she mean? أَغْسِلُ الْجَلَابَةِ لِمَعَلَىٰ أُزِيلُ الْبِهِ بِالْمَاءِ I would take off his many, many, his sperm that had hit the clothing, his semen. I was صلى الله عليه وسلم, I would take her off his clothing, she said. رضي الله تعالى عنها. So she has she taste, I would wash it, wash it. I would wash it, she said. أَغْسِلُ فَيَخْرُجُ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The messenger would go to the prayer. وَإِنَّ بُقْعَ الْمَاءِ فِي ثَوْبِهِ And the spot where I wash the water would also be there. بُقْعَ means what? The place. Um, the color would be different from that spot. It would be different. Muslim, on the other hand, it says, لَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَفْرُكُ مِنْ ثَوْبِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فَرْكًا فَيُصَلِّي فِيهِ I used to what? أَفْرُكُهُ it means that it dried on the Prophet's clothing. Huh? And she would take her nail and do this like this. That's what it is. She'll peel it off like that. From the Prophet's what? Clothing. Farkan. Farkan, you have to remember, is a, is a masdar mu'akidu li amilihi. It's a masdar because it comes mushtaqun min lafd al fi'l. It's rooted from the fi'l. Baraba Baraba Zaydun. Baraba Zaydun Muhammadan Darban. Maf'ul al mutlaq, they call it. To take it out of the fi'l that was mentioned previously. Afrukuhu farkan. Afrukuhu farkan is, is, is brought out of it. So they call it masdarun mu'akadu li'amrihi. And the fa'idah, there's a benefit in that which is nafi an yukuna ma'a dalkin fi ma'a. There's a meaning in that which is in there which is that she's trying to say I would only peel it. I mean I won't wipe it with my hand. That's the meaning that's in it. When she said afrukuhu, I would peel it off. Farkan a peeling only. I would only do that. No else. I won't even do that. To show you that the way she used to do the many is dealt with is very light. It's nothing big. It's not like a urine you wash it and you scrub it. Nah, nah. The many is not impure. It's not impure. It, rather, it was on the process of his clothing. Still, he'll go and he pray. And it was like a, the, the patch was there. Uh, the patch was there. We're in the buqa, buqa al ma. Buqa here is patch. It's patch. Uh, the word buqa means patch. It's a portion, a patch. Nah. The fiqh in the hadith. So first of all, we have to remember the first hadith she said she washes it. The second hadith she said she peeled it. What does that show? If the many, many of the Prophet ﷺ was rataban, meaning it was wet, it was just right then and then, she would wash it. No problem. If it dried, then she would peel it off. That's, that's not the fiqh of the hadith, it's just the point I'm mentioning. Fiqh of the hadith is here. One. Taharatul many that the many is pure. Why no laysa bi najasin and that is not najas. It is not najas. Two, istihbab al muhafadat ala nadafat al malabis. Striving huh, to purify your clothing. Try that is re recommended. Three, istihbab al ghusl al libas. It's recommended to wash your clothes. Walau min al shay al tahir al ladi yafhar fi. Even if the matter or the thing is pure, ah, such as juice poured over your clothes, it's nice to wash it, even if it's pure and it's not going to harm your, huh? Still to wash it, 
it's, 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 it's highly recommended. Four, jawaz salah the permissibility of uh, a prayer, to pray a prayer, fi fi atharul mani, the permissibility to pray a prayer with a garment that has the, huh, is the athar, the, uh, the, yeah, the remnants, huh, of the many or blood, as long as the person removes, uh, if he removes that original thing, he can pray on it. But then even it won't harm him if he doesn't. Five, jawazu salati fi thiyab al-ratma, wa ina asaba shay'i min al-tahir al-rat. Jawazu, the permissibility of salah, fi thawb al-ratma, the permissibility of praying a prayer with a clothing that's wet. She just washed it right now. It's wet. Wa in asaba shay'i min al-tahir al-rat. If something wet and that pure touches it, the water that she to wash it with it was clean water, so it's wet and the Prophet went out with it. Six, ob that is obligatory for the woman to serve her husband. Obligatory. Dalilu evidence ala taharati rutubati farji al mar'a. Dalilu evidence. Allah, that it's tahara, that it's pure. Rutubati, the moist of the woman's private part. It's pure. Seven. At tafriq fi inzal al mani. To distinguish between when the money comes out, when it comes out, if, you're, if it's dry on there or if it's wet, to distinguish between how to deal with it. One requires what? It requires water to remove it, and one requires, um, um, it requires to do uh, fark. The scholars have a khilaf regarding, the last, we finished that point. اختلاف العلماء, dispute of the scholars. اختلف العلماء في نجاسة المني وطهارته. The scholars have disputed one another regarding, is the many tahir or is it not? The Malikiya, the Hanafiya, they are of the view that, it, that it's impure, it's Najasa. And the evidence that they use is they say, if it was not Najasa, then why would the person be forced to do Ghusl? But the majority of the scholars, from the people of knowledge, ulama, are of the view that it's Tahir, and they use many evidences. First of all, this hadith that we're on right now, which the Prophet is clothing was still there was still remnant on it. Alayhi salatu was salam. First. Second one is huh, that the many is aslul insan. The many is the original essence of the human being. And it's the, what you were originally made from. It isn't then it can't be possible that the person's original essence is impure and in, that's not clean and then Allah honors him subhanahu wa ta'ala and removes that, inf that filth from him. How can that happen when your original essence is? Three. Al-ghusl la yadullu ala najasati. So now we're answering their point. We have to answer their point which is that the ghusl does not show that it's impure the many. It just shows bal huwa lil istiqzari kasair al-mustaqzara kal makhat وَالنَّظَافَةُ مِنَ الْمُسْتَقْذَرَةِ لَا يَدُّلُ عَلَى نَجَاسَتِهَا بَلْ هِيَ مَطْلُوبَةٌ شَرْعًا مَرْغُوبَةً عَقْلًا It is just for a person to clean himself huh? from that which is filth or dirt. When a person has many to come out, he smells bad. The odor that comes, comes out of his and the way he smells is not good. It's not good. So it's just to clean the person, but it doesn't show that there are many. And there's a difference between the many and the person. Naam. And the strongest view, as I said, is al qawlu bi taharati The view that says that it's tahir. Al-Hadithu um, Al-Hadithu al-Rabi'u wa thalathun An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ida jalasa bayna shu'abiha shu shu al-arba'i ثم جهدها وجب الغسل وفي لفظ وإن لم ينزل 
This hadith, Imam al-Bukhari narrated it. The first narration is Bukhari's wording. And Bukhari narrated in Kitab al-Ghusl. Muslim narrated it in Kitab al-Hayd. The second riwayah, second ri riwayah, as the Sheikh mentioned, is the wording of is the wording of Muslim, and Muslim narrated in Kitab al Hayyid. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says in this hadith, "إذا جلس بين الشعبي الأربع، if the man sits in between شعبي الأربع." Shu'ab is between the two legs uh, and the two hands. So if the woman lies down, huh, the woman lies down, the man when he sits in between her legs, her two arms are on the sides and her two legs are on the sides. So he's in between her two legs and her two arms. That's why it's called shu'abi al arba There's where the four comes from. The two arms are always going to be on the side and her two legs are going to be on the side. Naam, ar-rijilan. Or some of the scholars they say no, the, the four that's been counted is her legs and her fakhid, her thighs. It's either her two legs and her two thighs. Or it is her two hands and her two, uh, two legs. To be, to be honest, it's a kinayatun an al jima. It's just a indirect way of saying intimacy. Naam. And Islam, as you can see, it, always, it doesn't speak that vulgar and that bad way. Another thing that we take from that point we are mentioning is that which we inshallah are going to mention when we come to the fiqh of the hadith. We'll leave it to them. Um, the messenger said, bayna, If the man sits in between shu'abiha al-arba'i, he sits in between that, thumma jahadaha, and then he sexually pe penetrates his wife. Faqad wajab al -ghuslu. The penetration, as we said, it is that his private part and her private part touch. It doesn't even have to physically, it doesn't have to really fully enter. It doesn't have to. It's just that if they touch, wajab al -ghuslu. The ghusl is wajib. Ma ma'ana wajaba? Ay lazima. It's lazim. Obligatory. Wa thabata al ghusl. The ghusl has now become obligatory on him. Wa illam yanzil maniyan. Even if the man does not produce her semen. Even if he doesn't produce anything, the adhan goes off and he leaves. Or something happens. The house starts to burn from apart and he has to leave for one reason or another. He stops. Then what happens is he has to Still do ghusl. Ah. Fiqh al-Hadith. Wa illa munzil, I mentioned it. Even if he doesn't come, nothing comes out of it. Fiqh al-Hadith. Wa jawab al-ghusl. That it's obligatory to have ghusl bi mujarrad. Just at the fact there's a sexual penetration between the private part of the man and the woman. وَلَوْ بِدُونِ إِنزَال Even if nothing comes out. Two. وُجُوبُ الْغُسْلِ لَازِمٌ وَلَكِنْ وُجُوبُ عِنْدَ وَقْتِ الْعِبَادَةِ That the ghusl is wajib. But when is it wajib? As soon as they finish? No. As soon as the salah comes. Three. الْأَحْكَامُ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ The rulings of the sharia. بَيْنَ الْمَرْأَةِ وَبَيْنَ الْمَرْأَةِ الْأَحْكَامُ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ The... Sharia's legislations between the wife and the husband Come back to that one. Number four. Come back, I want to mention that later. Number four. Number three, just leave it like that. al hadith This hadith is nasikh. According to some of scholars' view, this hadith is abrogated. And they say that in the Min al that the water is from the water, meaning he has to something has to come out. That the Prophet said, Inna al that the fluid is from the fluid. Five. Using indirect speech, that w uh, that which matters that people will be shy of. Another matter that deserves to be brought to the attention, which is the third point, is. The position in Islam chose for the men, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned, is not an Islamic um, thing that the woman is on top of the man. The Sharia does not promote that. And it goes against the Islamic ethics of a woman and a man. Not that we're, not that uh, uh, the ulama are saying it's haram, because they need evidence for it. 
but it goes against the shyness and the way a man's power and a man's manhood is, is not that the woman does sexual intercourse with him, but he does it with his wife. That's how Islam, the man marries the woman, the man divorces the woman, the man, that's how Islam mentions it. So it's important that this ideology or this way of thinking that the women are on top, the women do what they want, is not what Islam uh, mentions.